Now, this is um, part two of the Ghost in the Series due process jurisdiction and um, what is it? Appropriation of property. So, um, I want to begin talking about a, a perpetuity. Now, when you understand when you create a security interest in something and you do it right, and you, you create perpetuity. These, you got to understand what you're doing in this so that you can have unalienable rights. That means when you, these rights, you don't want to ever waive these rights because you have forever perpetuity. This is unalienable rights right here. And that's why when you talk about certain things dealing with the Quran, under that covenant, you have unalienable rights. You see what I'm saying? Y'all got to understand what's going on when dealing with this information. I'm, I'm just dropping it to you. Now, that's a bond. Your word is bond. When you under the covenant of the Quran, your word is bond. When you, when you claim something, your word is bond. Some of the stuff is just implied under the jurisdiction that you're under. Don't nobody else have to explain certain things because what's known don't have to be explained. And you have to understand that. That's why I'm trying to tell you people, you have to understand this information. The Quran is a covenant. It's a bond. When they say your word is bond, that means you are bonded to the words that you speak that's coming out your mouth. So let's get into this. Perpetuity. Perpetuity. A bond or other security with no fixed maturity date. That means it lasts forever. A restriction making an estate inalienable, perpetual or for a period beyond certain limits fixed by law, the state or quality of lasting forever. So when you become under Muslim under their covenant, you're, that's the only jurisdiction that can be applied to you. I ain't, y'all ain't ready for this information, man. I'm dropping this science so y'all can understand what's real. How you break up all this monotony. Perpetuity. A perpetuity is an annuity that has no end or a stream of cash payments that continues forever. There are few actual perpetuities in existence. For example, the United Kingdom's UK government issues them in the past. They were known as consoles were all finally redeemed in 2015. Real estate and preferred stock are among some of the types of investments that affect the result of perpetuity. And prices can be established using um, techniques for value of perpetuity. Perpetuity are but one of the time value of money methods for valuing finance assets. Perpetuities are, form, are a form of ordinary annuities. Now, when you're talking about it for us in annuities and how it's being applied in commerce, that's one thing. But perpetuity can also be uh, bound to your religious rights. So you got to understand that perpetuity can be in this component or another component as it relates to rights of property. You are property of the Most High. So what? You have inalienable rights that nobody can strip. The only time you can waive those rights is when you give consent. Understand what I'm saying? Y'all can keep accepting those benefits if you want. You're going to find yourself up the creek with no paddle. Let's get into it. Now, we, we talked about proprietary rights. Let me jump on into this. Let me show y'all something. We're going to talk about copyright. I ain't got there yet. 
But let's talk about law of obligation obligations. Let's talk about law of obligations, law of persons, and laws of property. Law of property. Law of obligation. The law of the category of law dealing with prop proprietary rights in persona. Let me break this down to you, right? Let me break this down. Let me show you how this works. The trust has legal title. You, as a beneficiary, have an unalienable right to whatever the of that trust hold. You have an unalienable right to that property. I don't care what it is. So you got to understand how this works. This is what I'm trying to tell y'all. Y'all got the y'all need ghost in the system. Namely, the relation between obligor and obligee. It is one of three de departments in which civil law was traditionally divided. See in personum, law of property, and law of status. Let me break this down. Let me break this down for y'all. Now let's go down to laws of person. Law of person. The law relating to persons. Now we know persons is also corporations. The law that pertains to the different statutes of persons. Okay? So whatever venue or territory or whatever you in, we they talking about how it applies to you. So the state of Ohio has its own statutes. The state of Illinois has its own statute. You can't force um, uh, Illinois laws on on individuals in Ohio, and vice versa. Okay, the law relating to persons, the law that pertains to a different statutes of person. This is also commonly known as the juris personarum, a short form of juris court court act. Ad personas pertinent, the law that pertains to persons. Let's go under law of property. Law of property, the category of dealing with property of uh, property rights in rim, such as personal servitudes, pre-dial servitudes, and rights of real securities. It is one of three departments in which civil law was traditionally divided. Persons, properties, and modes of acquiring property. In civil codes, the following, I mean, in civil codes, the follow the mode of the German civil code. Civil law is divided into five books, general principles, obligations, family law, property, and successions. C in RAM, law of obligations, and law of status. Now let's go down to the laws of status so you can see it for yourself. Law of status, the category of law dealing with personal. The law, it says the category of law dealing with personal and non proprietary rights. This is what I talk about putting your stuff out there butt naked. Putting your stuff out there butt, 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 butt naked. Whether in rim or in personum, and it is one of the three departments in which civil law is divided. So you got to understand that you got to secure it all the way around. So when you layer this up, you will have all the protection you'll need from the public and the private with your with multiple things that I'm gonna show you with multiple contracts. Now let's let's go on. Let me see what is this. Before we go there, we are gonna go here. Let's go back. We're gonna talk about c 
copyrights tr versus trademarks versus patents versus license. Everything you need to know. Okay. This is what you need to know. Copyrights. This is what I'm talking about. This is what we're doing. Licensing, friend, all this stuff is other protections. Copyright, trademarks, patents, and license are each a different form of intellectual property rights protected, recognized by U.S. law. The distinction among them can be sub subtle, and often the same products or services may involve more than one of the intellectual property rights. How can you tell the, them apart when deciding how to protect your company assets? Assets here, how? Here's how. Copyrights. Copyrights protect the rights of the author in which originally created creative works. Copyrights works include art, artistic creations like novels, paintings, films, and songs, but also business relates related works like software, codes, websites, website design, um, architectural uh, drawing, marketing reports, and product manuals. Now, if you've been following me, you heard me say copyright what? Bonds and all of that. The author of copyright work has the exclusive right to what? Reproduce, print, or copy, publish, perform, display, film, and record the creative content. Creative uh, derivative works from the original work, for example, updates, revisions, summary, summaries, translations, and adaptations. Copyright protection arises from automatically at the time the work is fixed into tangible forms, either direct through use of a machine like a computer projector or movie projector. Copyrights have a term equal to the life of the author plus 70 years. Okay. It's a, if a company is the owner of the copyright, it has a term equal to 95 years after the date the work is first made public. So here's the copyright laws. I need to make sure I go through all of this. A trademark is a symbol, word, slogan, right? Design, color, logo that identifies the source of the product or service. Okay? Distinguish distinguishes from from those made or provided by others. Trademarks can represent the product and service itself, feature or element of a product or service. The manufacturer or provider of the product or service. You get what I'm saying? I ain't gonna go through all of this. Y'all can read it for yourself. Patents. Patent protects Rights of the inventor. A patent is a 20 year exclusive property right granted to the PTO for an invention. Okay, I'm gonna kind of shorten this up because I don't want to. That's this last video was way too long. Okay, now let's go to license. License, licensings are contracts that transfer IP rights from the owner of the right, the licensor, to a third party who wants to use them. The licensee that can be exclusive rights are granted to only one licensee, or non exclusive rights are granted to multiple licensees. A licensee typically pays the licensee. A license or a royalty in exchange for the right to use IP. Royalties are usually based on a percentage of revenue the licensee grants from the sale of product using the license IP rights. So, when you get ghosts in the system, I already got all of this stuff ready into rock and roll. 
we gonna layer this up. It's gonna you gonna have multiple layers of protection. Almost damn near impenetrable. So y'all can look this information up for yourself. I wanted to break this down, but I want to show you um, this about this copy copyrights. Let me see. I was. What's this? It. Take this. I'm gonna plug it in. Now, okay, this is what it was. This was. Now we're gonna talk about copyright. Copyright falls under this section of the United States Code annotated. Now you can look at this under the um, United States Code under this and talk about copyright. It's the physical form in which a creative work is fixed and and from which the work can be reproduced or perceived with or without the aid of a special device. 17 U.S.C.A. Section 101 Copyright, an expressive work that is substantially similar to a copywritten work and not reproduced uh, um, co coincidentally and independently from the same source as a copyright, copywritten work, proof of the copying is an infringement infringement action requires evidence of the defendant to access the original work and substantially similar of the defendant's work to the original up to the original see substantive similarity under similarity the noun copyright ordinarily connotes a tangible object that is a reproduction of the original work the courts have duly found no reason to depart from this uses in law of copyright. So you got to understand, copyright laws are done on the federal level. Now, trademarking is done by state and federal. Intellectual property licensing can be done, I think, um, state or federal. That falls under uh, intellectual property. But by you being a foreign under a foreign jurisdiction, you will fall into the federal courts. Remember, corporations have civil rights. So let me go into let me see how long the video is. Eighteen minutes. Eighteen minutes. Let's talk about this. Non proprietary. Not registered or protected as a trademark or brand name or generic. So, when you put your stuff out there and you don't have proprietary rights or perpetuity in a thing. Your stuff is blah, 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 naked. And when you attach it to other people's property, which is their contracts, they can use it as any way they see fit. Understand? And y'all need to understand that. So, you got to understand how ghosts in the system work. Y'all need to contact King L. Bay on Facebook. and But let me get through this.
so let me go through this. Um, sorry about that. My phone was ringing. Let's talk about rejecting a claim. Now, y'all got to understand the probate court is a legislative court. And under then this falls under the common, the three common pleas courts, which is the common pleas courts, or the probate court. They also got the common pleas courts. Then you have the appellate court, and then the supreme court. In these capacities, the appellate court and the uh, um, Supreme Court or Courts of Record. Let me see if I can find that in here. So it talks about action. So you got to understand this. Look at, go check out my state code to see if you can find it into your um, state code. So you got to understand, it says, when a claim against an estate, against property, real or personal, has been rejected in whole or in part, but not referred to a referee, or when a claim has been allowed in whole or in part, thereafter rejects the claim and must commence an action on the claim, or the part of the claim was rejected, with two months after the rejection, if the debt or a part of the debt was the rejected in this due or within two months after the debt or part of the debt that was rejected becomes due or forever barred from maintaining an action on a claim or part of the claim that was rejected. If the executor or administrator dies, resigns, or is removed within two months period before the action is commenced on a claim or part of the claim that was rejected, the action may commence within two within two months after the appointment of the secession. For the purpose of this section, the action of the claimant is commenced when the uh, complaint and precipice for summons, service of summons or the executor or administrator or the, distribu uh, the distributee who received the pr presentation of the claim as provided under these sections of the revised code. So, Ain't this what they doing in criminal court too? Commence claiming is commenced when the complaint and the pressing P for summons to the executor. They they treat you like that. So you gotta understand this information. This stuff applies. So I told y'all about rejection of a claim and all of that. Let me see, let me see what I want to show you something. Oh no, that I I must have. Uh, okay, I must have uh, took it down. Uh, so I want to talk about this bid in your in your jurist in your in your contracts also, right? You also want to have this. This is what I'm saying. This is King L. Bay dropping some jewels on y'all. A flea clause is a clause in a trust document which purports on the concurrence of a, spe a specified trigger events automatically to transfer the trusteeship administration, the trust assets, and probably also governing law of the trust to another jurisdiction or other jurisdictions. So when you have in your contracts, you gotta understand how to do this, baby. This note considered some issue relating to drafting and enforcing a flea clause and also highlights some alternative to flea clauses. So when you try, when these people try to force you under a jurisdiction, you gotta understand about putting certain triggers in your contract where you feel like you being adjudicated, and it's unfair. You can switch to another jurisdiction. Boy, this is gangster. I'm signing out. This is King L. Bay. You watching Ghosts in the System. This is part two of Due Process. 
jurisdiction and appropriation of property. We go into what is all these different things and how they work. Y'all need to watch this stuff and let me break this down. This is a two-part series. A ghost in the city. Uh, ghost in the system. I'm out.